This is Official Nerd Business. Hello, nerd boys and girls. Welcome back to our regular programming. Today we're looking at uh, problem uh, number 8 in the Project Euler series and as usual I've already created a file for Euler 8 in our um, solution and I've copied in the problem statement uh, which gives us an enormous block of numbers. We are to believe that there are a thousand digits in this number and the four adjacent digits in this thousand digit number that have the greatest product are 9, 9 and 8 and 9 making this. Then the problem is find the 13 adjacent digits in the thousand digit number that have the greatest product. What is the value of this product? So for this um, problem, uh, first off we are going to need to work with this enormous block of data so I think I'll take it out of here. Uh, actually I'll, I'll cut it out. Um, and place it in its own string here and give this block a name huge number equals all of this data and this this problem when we start to uh, solve it in our attempt number one here we will see that it is not terribly hard to solve which is nice mathematically speaking because it gives us the opportunity to look at uh, the programming side of things. So first off, let's take a real good look at our uh, data here. Um, we are told that this is a thousand digit number, but in fact it isn't. That's the first little uh, cheaty bit on the, uh, on the problem statement here. At present, this is a string. And we are asked to uh, visualize the string not as a uh, block with the, all the new lines in it, but to look at it as one continuous string. Now we are not going to remove all the new lines by hand, of course. There are several, quite a lot of ways to uh, do this in the um, in our solution. So let's start with setting this huge num. Uh, let's see, we want to uh, get rid of all the new lines, so let's just simply do that uh, using replace. Oh wait, uh, we have a module variable which isn't easily accessible in our method here, so that fixes that and style requires us to have an extra new line here fine uh, let's see we want to replace um, an enter uh, so a, a line break as we can see uh, between all the lines here uh, is a character as well it's called a control character uh, you have printable characters which are uh, all the keys on your keyboard including all of this and there are several unprintable characters like the tab character which uh, is converted to spaces here in the editor but uh, the tab itself is a control character space is uh, basically a sort of control character I guess and enter aka no line is also a control character um, and in this particular string we have new lines represented by um, slash n the slash is a special kind of character in strings uh, which denotes that the following character is not meant to be this literal character but combined this makes a control character so you have slash t for tabs and slash n for new lines which are the most common ones you will find um, so if we want to get rid of all the new lines we simply replace all new lines by an empty string and to show that this works uh, we are going to print uh, this bad boy then we will do our conversion and we will print it again and all the rest is fine for now so let's run this I'm now running only this 
uh, file and I'm not running it through our solution host, uh, which we, I guess we can do later on to uh, see timing results. Um, so here's the difference. First up is the block as is with all the um, uh, line breaks in it and starting here we get 1000 digit line of all the individual uh, digits in the string right after each other and then the num uh, is given up by the program uh, that's this bit so we are calling the run function which returns whatever comes out of attempt number one but attempt number one doesn't return anything yet uh, so this returns none, this again returns none, and this blindly prints it. So that's what we are seeing right now in our output. Um, so now that we have our um, our string, uh, in fact, and all the later attempts, if, if we are say that we would want to create a second attempt at solving this, at trying a different method, at just seeing how, uh, how we can uh, write code for this a little bit uh, different, um, then we would have this and first off the first thing we're going to do in attempt 2 is exactly the same thing as we are going to do here which is flattening the list so what we could do is uh, place this in run and then pass it in so if we are over here we could say uh, simply this um, And when calling this, we could pass in the global reference, which is now simply an argument to this function. We do not no longer need global in here, and we know that the list we get is always and uh, the nice and flat one, so without the line breaks. All right. So now we have a thousand character string. And we need to find a slice of 13 adjacent characters, consecutive characters, which make the highest product. So we will need to keep track of whatever highest product we've seen already. Which is nothing. And we need to take slices uh, from the string. So we could do that with a, a simple for loop, of course, for uh, in range uh, we want a substring from our huge num starting at this point and running all through this point and to see that this gives every substring we want and is in fact 13 characters long to test if this is in or exclusive etc uh, we could do this and once again run it so here we have yeah, it, we have an off by one error already. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 characters. So that's that's alright. But as we can see in the um, string, our last segment should end with 50 and it ends with a 5, but not the uh, following 0. So we need to make this one more. Yes, that already looks better. So now we know that we are running through every slice. In fact, um, we could say we're going to multiply every number that's in here uh, with everything else. And if there is a zero in here, we know any one zero will make the, uh, the eventual product zero. Multiplying something by zero yields a zero. Um, so if uh, substring has a zero, so if zero is in substring, we do not need to do any further testing. We can simply skip to the next iteration of this loop and 
if it doesn't contain a zero, so this will filter out anything holding a zero, so the element that we just found on the last bit. Let's uh, skip now because it has a zero and the bit before that also has a zero and the bit before that also has a zero. Zeros are quite common in this string. So we are left with not too many slices of 13 characters. Let's testing. Now we need a temporary value which we will set at 1 to see where this multiplication is going and up until now we were working with a string and the string is not much more than a list of characters but they are ASCII characters so they're alphanumeric characters they aren't numbers yet so what we need to do now is turn this list this temporary uh, uh, slice into numbers so let's make uh, an array for this and we will use a list generator um, a list generator is a sort of a numerator. We can uh, put a list in here, uh, or an, uh, yeah, a list, uh, and we can uh, give a, a random name to any element. And now we can do an operation or a test or uh, any such thing on this element from this list. So we could say. Um, We also need the, the, the four bit. Uh, so we have a list from which we will take one element at a time and do this operation on it. And this yields a list where uh, the specifically the, the int operator here, um, or int function if you will, um, receives an alphanumeric argument and casts it to int. So if we pass in the string seven, uh, in this case, uh, excuse me. If we would pass in this string 7, it would simply clip off the quotes and we get the 7. Um, so now we have a list of, uh, of audience. We also could add some condition that is tested as well. Um, and again, have this for instance, we've already filtered out all the zeros, so this is... Uh, also, we wouldn't want to filter out the zeros only on the sublist, but we want to cancel any substring that has any zeros in it. So this is, this little bit is nonsense, but just just goes to show that you can put um, tests in here as well. So only elements from this list are put into this final list if the conditions are met. Um, but for now, let's lose the condition. So this is a list generator. This generates a list based on the statements that we put in it. Now we have a list of numbers, so for every number on that list, let's multiply P uh, by that particular number. So we set our uh, initial product to 1, not to 0 of course, but to 1. So if we multiply 1 with the first number on the list, we get that first number, then we multiply that again by the second number, etc, etc, until we have all 13 numbers, which gives us a product. Uh, and if that product is greater than whatever um, highest product we had up until then, we've replaced the highest product. There we are. Finally, if we've seen every possible slice, we can uh, return whatever highest product this yielded. So if we run it now, we have uh, our base parameter of 13 adjacent digits. Uh, did we use that? No, we didn't. Um, that is a bit of a shame. So here we could say n minus 1. And here we would need n. And now we use our parameter. All right, that's better. Let's throw in a test run, shall we? Uh, we still have a bit of a runaway print statement here. We could do without this. And here we are running attempt number one of this uh, data again. Just to clean things up. And here is our answer. Once again, I've already uh, solved this problem. 
and I can tell you if you enter this number over at Project Euler you will get the green check mark. So our solution is running fine and it took us a bit of well, seeing through how, how uh, a programming language would interpret this big blob of data. Uh, Project Euler can say it's a number but it isn't, it's a string until we tell it to treat it as a number to cast it to a number and we need this as a string to take our slices of 13. It's uh, Mathematically speaking it's a very weird operation to just take a random splice of 13 numbers from the middle of any kind of number, um, but it isn't a number as I said before, it's, it's a string, it's text, data, it holds absolutely no value as a number until we want to create a product of 13 adjacent numbers, which we do uh, in this bit. So there's that, um, but as I said before, there are many ways in which we can uh, treat this, this block of data. Uh, there are a lot of ways in which you can uh, solve this, uh, this bit where you uh, need to get rid of the uh, new lines. But I want to leave it at, at this for now. I do want to look at one other attempt at solving this. Um, again, a copy and code usually isn't sign that you're doing things right but I just want to change one tiny bit in how this book works and I want to call attempt number two the next time we run um, instead of uh, creating a range which are off by one error um, that determines the starting index we could also work our way backwards through this string and to do that we could use a while loop while the length of our huge number is greater than or equal to n, we simply want to take the last n characters off of our string. So now we again we have a slice of uh, 13 characters, but to get rid of the last character we could use something like uh, this um, so pop is a, uh, a function that you can call on lists which uh, takes off the last element it uh, it returns something so we could uh, we could create a variable in which we store this but we don't want the last character we've already used the last character here we only want to get rid of it and pop is a pretty um, fast clean and native way to literally pop one character um, so take it off and it modifies the list as well so usually when we call a length function or whatever um, the list remains unchanged in this case using uh, pop and there's a couple more of these but using pop is the most common example um, the list gets modified so the list the reference to this list just remains this but we with one less element and the element that is trimmed off is put into temp in this case um, said we are not going to use it so we don't need an assignment it will still return the value but not store it anywhere, not assign it to a variable. And that's pop, so let's see if this works. I know we didn't. Um, because we cannot call, um, which I think is kind of weird. Um, oh wait, uh, mess this bit up. Sorry, I was expecting a different error. <laughs> there we are. Um, oh, wrong order. Come on, man. So, block size uh, and block. Okay. There we are. This is the, uh, the error I was expecting, which is kind of a weird one. As said before, in, in a lot of ways, a string is nothing more than a list of characters. However, pop is one list function that isn't available on string objects. Now that isn't much of a problem um, because we can modify huge num to be a list. Uh, you can use this list function in the same way as you could use an int function for example. So it would cast whatever data type you pass into it to a list if that conversion is possible. There are uh, exceptions to this of course. I uh, wouldn't throw a non-value in here for example. Um, 
but if at all possible uh, this will break down whatever you put into it and return a list if you put an integer in here you would get um, uh, if you were to put uh, this into it you would not get as you might expect this list but you would get a list with one element and namely you would get this list when you put an integer in here python doesn't recognize you want every character to be an individual item in that list and it will just simply keep um, the element intact and if you put in a string which basically again is already sort of a list um, then it does uh, chop it up into individual characters so now huge num is a list of thousand string items instead of one string of thousand items and since it now is explicitly a list this should work on lists just fine so if we run that Shazam we once again get the answer that we are expecting so that's uh, to show that there are several ways and in my opinion in this case one isn't necessarily much better than any other um, this even uh, I think our attempt number two works um, more in the, the uh, in the way that we were doing things already with strings um, because it, it trims them from the back which I think is a, is a pretty neat trick it's a bit cleaner um, but this is also fine and maybe more intuitive so write uh, the, the kind of code that you want and as an exercise for the viewers try and experiment with this bit of code where you replace the uh, new line variables and see if you can come up with a way to do this bit in a different way I hope you've enjoyed it I certainly like that this challenge was a bit simpler on the mathematical side so we could take a moment to look at uh, more programming in Python uh, looking at some of the actual language features and the way uh, Python which I think is a very strong side of Python works with lists I will see you next week for problem number 9. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.